travel through time the way H.D. Wells envisioned it. There are a lot of things to consider. How about having a team? How about putting a team together that you would travel with? A trustworthy team that should be assembled, that could benefit us in an expedition. So, Jamie, if you, Jamie Sparling, could assemble a team of four to travel in time with, past or future, who would it be and why? You're going to choose someone in your personal life that will be a confidant. You will choose a historical figure to serve as second in command. You're going to pick a comedian that could kind of alleviate the stress. And you're going to pick a well-known present-day figure that could be the spokesperson during your trip. Well, I would go into the future first. Let's talk about a mission, the year 2075. Okay, we're all scared to death with what is happening in the world right now. And there's so much stuff. I want to go there and kind of check it out. Every generation thinks that the next generation, the next generation is absolutely going to just blow everything. And it hasn't happened yet, so I'm still hopeful. I would take my aunt with me as my confidant. My parents both passed away long ago. My aunt has been the number one uh, most positive influence in my life. She is a dramatic opera singer and an author, and also, uh, coincidentally, the first in my family to go to college. My historical figure, uh, I would take Nelson Mandela. Uh, we're going into the future and we're going to check out some things and he's been through hell and back and still has a clean heart. And my comedian, George Carlin, satirical humor and the ability to look at things, point out the sore thumb that everybody's kind of going, no, this isn't happening. And then put it in such a way that it's clearly happening. It's absolutely hilarious and breaks the ice. And my media person or spokesperson, I don't know if this was, uh, anyway, I pick Avi Klein. But since I'm gonna come back, I wanna bring a trusty team with me. And, and so off the bat, I need somebody, number one, that's gonna be a confidant, someone that I can trust unconditionally. There's only one person um, that I know of on the planet that I give that much trust to. And um, it's it's easy to see because my dad broke it down to me years ago. And he said, there's only gonna be uh, you know one decision, this is how he put it, that you're gonna make in, in life that's gonna be a lifelong decision and that's who you marry. And he said, you know, a uh, simple question to ask yourself, if this person can be your number one priority, always, no matter what, um, then that's the right person two. for you. Person number two, um, thought about this for a long time too. Past that, and that would be Mr. Einstein, who not only would be uh, the guy that understands, one of the guys that understands how time travel works, um, he also would have some pretty good questions and good observations during the whole trip. So, in fact, uh, a lot of comedians that are material based, uh, after a while, they, they could be annoying. Like some people, Charlie Chaplin is going to go with me on this. Charlie Chaplin, uh, in, in my opinion, he's like one of the creators of, of comedy because he can find and make a funny... Um, situation uh, out of anything you know out of just taking your bags off of the carousel um, uh first of all i would definitely take uh my sister my sister uh michelle uh michelle Jones. she's um uh, i'm the youngest of seven and she's the one that's right above me and ever since um i was a kid man we had a type of relationship that um that was kind of unbreakable i'm mean, historical feature uh figure I would take um, probably Martin Luther King. Um, as, as I always talk about, I always talk about uh, peace, love, joy, happiness. And um, I, I feel that he is someone that can kind of get that message across no matter uh, what time zone or whatever. Well, uh, my comedian would be uh, Richard Pryor. Uh, Richard Pryor, I mean, I, if, I feel that if someone, in, someone that and make jokes about himself going through the stuff that he went through, the trials and tribulations that he went through. Um, 
you know, uh, from the drug addictions to setting itself on fire. To and my modern day would be uh, my spokesperson, I guess, publicist. Um, I would say Michelle Obama. Um, I think um, going back to, uh, I think she's someone that would, would definitely have uh, have my best interest at heart. I think she's someone that would definitely, uh, uh, once again, be able to present the message out that that I want to uh, relate to the people. I think it's someone that people can gravitate to, and and uh, uh, and, and and she greets them with a warm, with, you know, with a warm either handshake or hug. You know, I think that's some something that I want, some a person like that I want alongside. She's a motherly type figure. Um, Y'all know how important, how, how close I am with my mom. So she's that motherly type figure as well. Okay, so first of all, um, big shout out to all my competitors because you guys know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fighter. So you guys are competitors right now. You know what I'm saying? Let's put it at that. So number one, I'm bringing, I'm bringing the gang with me, Avi. You know that? I'm bringing uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, right. Pernell Whitaker, Mike Tyson, and Jake Paul. Mike gonna keep us secured and keep the eyes open. Pernell Whitaker is, is with his with his charisma and his style, he's just gonna keep everything fun and and and, and on and going and very militant. So these are my guys, you know what I'm saying? I'm not bringing none of my relatives, my mom or my grandmother, because I don't know what type of status they're gonna be in the state and I don't know where we going. And <laughs> one thing I know, yo, Ivy, I'm from Brooklyn. You gotta yes. fight That's what yes. I Joe, can you discuss a time in your life? in which you placed the limitation on your behavior and it ended up serving you rather well. Uh, well, people felt that I was better than uh, choosing making a decision to go to Maryland. So they felt that I was limiting myself at that point because at that point, Maryland was just getting off of probation. Um, a couple of years before, they didn't have a winning record. The limitation that I'd used to kind of propel myself to the next level. Um, becoming National Freshman of the Year, my freshman year, my sophomore year, we made it back to the Sweet 16. And um, yeah. Yeah. and uh, once again, I was National Player of the Year then, you know, kind of really, you know, make you make you feel good about the decisions that you're making with the limitations that people have, 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 have put on you. On top of that, you were, you were a rookie in a season where rookies were not going to get attention anyway because yeah. Jordan's Bulls 172, Magic Johnson returns. <laughs> Against you guys, I think January of '96. Can I say something about that, Avi? Yes, how I was that? that? You, how did that feel? Like Avi, that was a dream come true for me, Avi. Uh, I grew up a Lakers fan. I'm from Virginia, right. but I grew up a Lakers fan. Magic Johnson was my favorite player growing up. And uh, right before '95, I got drafted. You know, that was uh, maybe two years before is when sure. he had to retire. So I can't believe, who, I can't remember who it was. Right. But they right. were shooting free throws, so he came and stood right beside me, man. I, I just got like a little kid, man. Handfuls of pills, I'd swallow them, drink it with beer, not even know what somebody gave me. Really, really <clears throat> careless. It was a careless time because for me, I didn't know how dangerous it would get. I remember uh, talking to my dad on the phone. And I was like, oh my God, dad, I got myself hooked on drugs. I'm gonna have to go to um, rehab or something now and fucking Oh, man. My God, get all straightened out. And my dad was like, have, have you tried quitting? And I was like, well, no, but I mean, I've been taking them, I, I mean, like every day for a long time. I mean, from what I understand, he goes, well, maybe you can just quit. My, my view, though, that, that I want to say is on the strength that people have, maybe, that they don't know they have. So that's where, you know, like a lot of people... Uh, they they don't know, like I didn't know, that I could just quit. That's a thin line because they obviously care about the friendship, but they care more about losing somebody as a friend than losing them as a living human being. So in that case, is it better to be slapped with the truth than kissed with a lie? Yeah. I mean, I mean if, you're, if you're asking me, if you need... If you need help, you need help. And so literally, there's a bunch of guys who will come around and be like, dude, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you, Vic is coming up. He's coming upstairs. If your dishes aren't done, it's going to cost you 10 bucks. I think addiction is very real. And I think that uh, there is a lot of different pieces of it. And for many of us, it's going to require much more than just quitting, you know? But 
I, I've seen you wrestle, sir. I'm not that surprised that out of the middle of nowhere that you were like, I'm just done, right? Because some people have that inside. You know, the mashed potato face was what I had. It was called Somas. And, you know, you would kind of just take yeah. a lot of them, you'd be coming down after a match, and then you'd want to get up. And it's it's mm. it's the Coke, and that's, you know, it's the Northeast, right? So it's not like we were flying and lucky to get a Denny's. Advancing to round number three officially are Rob Van Dam, Joe Smith, and Jamie Sparling. They will all be in the third round of the TKN. Right. 